How you doing guys? This is Anthony here from DIY Auto Tech, Automotive Diagnosis and Repair. Today, we're gonna to be talking about race radios and mobile radio setups out in the field using handheld radios. So you're gonna be communicating with your race trucks, with your desert family out in the desert or at any sort of event that are using race radios, rugged radios, PCI radios, Kenwoods, whatever they have, this is gonna be able to work for that. This is gonna be a portable antenna mass setup system to get your handheld radio, whether that's a Beofang, a Wochen, a Motorola, a Kenwood, an Icon, it doesn't matter. Your handheld radio, we're gonna turn it into a high power, high watt, far propagating, far receiving radio. And how we're gonna do that is by using an antenna mast. So we're gonna connect our radio to a 16 foot antenna mast with a big antenna that provides decibels of gain. And that's gonna also help us to receive better. So we're gonna be able to transmit and be able to receive from further away. So it's gonna be a win-win. A little background about me. I am an amateur radio operator. I'm also a GMRS licensed radio operator. But as a career, I communicate on the base radio system and I am licensed through Orange County EMS to run the base radios as a medical control for all of the paramedic staffed fire departments in Orange County while we are stationed at a base radio in a hospital command system. So safe to say, I am a radio nerd both in hobby and in work practice. I've created a kit that's gonna be both economical for those of you who wanna build something and it's gonna be professional. So it's gonna last a long time using good quality parts. Let's bring you into the full setup and take a look at what I've built here. One thing I like about this setup here is that it's super modular and it's really short. You can see here in its condensed version that it's uh, just below about, I wanna say five foot five. I'm sitting around five foot nine and it's a little shorter than I am. So super lightweight, which is really nice. So you can pack it, store it, haul it wherever you need to go and all the other pieces of kit show up in a little blue stuff sack. What's great about this kit is a lot of the equipment just wraps up in a small stuff sack that you can buy at Walmart or online on Amazon. So I have all of my coax cable in here, my covers, Velcro loops, SWR meter, some electrical tape, my guy line stakes, and pretty much everything I need except for the antenna mast, radio, and antenna to get this thing up in the air. Now, of course, this mast and radio does nothing without the proper antenna. So again, you're gonna have to pack this separately. If you wanna Velcro this to the mast, you can, but uh, this is gonna add a considerable length. You can see here, I have this cut down to VHF and it's, I don't know, a good four feet or so. And the radials themselves are 22 inches and those go on the NMO mount, all four of them to create the ground plane. And of course, nothing can be done without the radio, right? This is the heart of the system here. So for me, the Motorola XTS 5000 is the weapon of choice in terms of radio communication. This is a bulletproof radio. You can buy these online on eBay. They've been serviced and upgraded to the Model 3 units. And I have two of them now and they work wonderfully well. I use them on a daily basis. And of course the radio is only as good as the audio that you can transmit and or receive. So again, we're going with a Motorola shoulder mount mic because this helps to clip on the radio mount or if I need to dismount it and use it uh, in a tactical situation, I could clip the radio to myself and clip the shoulder mic somewhere wherever I need it to go. It also helps to communicate out in the field because I can just grab the mic, talk where I need to, and then reclip it in place. All right guys, this is the portable base antenna mass all set up. Everything's ready to rock and roll. So we've got the 16 foot Lowe's painter's pole. We have a guide out at the bottom here. I've got two eight inch stakes. I've got four guy out points with three millimeter loss and glow wire with metal tie outs that keeps this thing nice and sturdy. I've got my Motorola XTS 5000 and VHF hooked up with the Motorola shoulder mic mount. These are all OEM Motorola parts. The Motorola itself is connected to my RG8X coax cable with Anfinol PL259 connectors. And that's gonna be using a jumper loop. And this has a SO239 connector with some RG8X on it down to a SMA female connector which I sanded down to the threads to mate with the Motorola. That all shoots all the way up. Up there, you can see my American flag flying up in the wind to gauge wind, all the way up to my layered NMO mount with four radials on it and a 55 inch whip antenna in VHF. That's gonna give us three decibels of gain on VHF. 
and that's going to help us to propagate our signal and give us an output of around 10 watts when this radio normally does 5, thanks to that 3 decibel gain. It's a bit windy out here today, so excuse the noise, but I wanted to show you the setup with some wind. I'm going to bring you in closer, show you the tidbits of the radio, the antenna, and the coax cable, and see if we can make some contacts today. We got one patient, 29 year old male, chief complaint none, saying no 3. He was going approximately 45 miles per hour. Uh, he doesn't want, doesn't want any uh, medical attention at the moment. So we're out here in Orange County, California right now, and I was just picking up a uh, paramedic contact from Angeles National Forest, which is due north in Los Angeles. So you can see just the power of this setup. So I've got my Motorola XTS 5000 here, and I have it tilted up a little bit so that when I am walking around at my height of five foot nine, I could easily see the touch screen. I don't need to bend over to take a look, and I could change whatever zones I want to. The radio is stationed on a mount that I'm going to show you here and the mic unclips easily so that I can grab it, communicate on the radio as needed and clip it back in. And so this mount keeps everything from moving around and we're using quality parts here. Motorola's are going to last as long as you do. And you can see my mount here is just a piece of steel that I had laying around and I bent it a little bit and put a little lip on the edge so the radio can't slide off. And then I covered it with shrink tubing to help keep the radio from getting dinged or scratched. Same goes for the mic mount side. Okay, so connector wise, I do want to talk about this a little bit because normally people would just connect their long coax cable straight to the radio. That is a big no-no because this is a handheld radio with a very small antenna connector and it's not meant for a lot of pressure. So if you put too much pressure on it, you're going to break the antenna port on your radio. So use a jumper loop that's highly flexible. That way you have a small piece of cable in between. And so I'm decreasing the strain. You can see that my coax cable is going straight down into the radio. It's not being kinked or bent. And so I'm taking all the weight off of the radio and putting it onto the pole. This connector I purchased on eBay. It had an SMA female to SO239. And the SMA female, I just shaved down a little bit to match the Motorola connector. And then I like to use some Velcro hook and loop to just keep everything tidy. I used to use electrical tape, but this works much better. So by using this, I have it clamped to the pole. I know that it's not moving anywhere, and this helps to keep everything nice and tidy. And then holding my piece of one and a half inch metal on was pretty easy. I just bought a $16 mount off of Amazon with some hose clamps that come with it, and it just clamps to the base of the pole. And if I move the mic out of the way, you can see some of the mount here. silence that you can see that there's a couple screw holes there's some screw holes on the side here as well and it allows for some adjustability in the mount working our way up the pole you can see we have the I have a 12 foot piece of RG8X made in the USA with the Amphenol PL259 connectors these are high quality connectors and you always want to make sure you use the highest quality coax and connectors possible to decrease your amount of decibel loss. A cable like this, it's under 25 feet. You're not going to have any issues with like decibel loss. But if you go anything over 50 feet, you need to really consider like a higher grade coax cable. Now I'm going to show you coax cable going up the painter's pole. And as you can see up top, we got the flag flying, the 22 inch radials and the VHF whip antenna. It was at this point that my Rode Wireless Go mic hit my pocket and the mute button was pushed. And so what we're talking about here is the scan functionality of the Motorola XTS 5000 and why this is a great radio for your desert applications. So I'm showing you here that I have my rugged radio frequencies and my PCI radio frequencies in here. I can push the scan button and I could scan through all those channels within a second. It's probably actually faster than that. It's one of the fastest scanning, if not the fastest scanning, handheld radio that I know of. And of course I did some radio checks on video here. I was contacting people in Catalina Island, also contacting people in Lake Elsinore, and beyond. So you can see the functionality of this radio, how far you can transmit, 
and receive from. I'm in Orange County, California. And keep in mind, your Motorola XTS 5000 variants can cost anywhere from $250 to $700, depending on all the equipment you buy with it. And so if that's outside of your budget, you can absolutely use, you know, the rugged radios, handheld, the PCI handheld radios, ICOMs, Beofangs, Chens, all the Chinese variants. They're all going to have VHF versions of handheld radios that will work just fine. Just keeping in mind that their scan function won't be nearly as good, their battery life won't be nearly as long, their audio on transmit and receive will be nowhere near as nice as on the Motorola's, and they just overall won't be as reliable as the Motorola products. So keep that in mind that I started with an $80 Beofang radio with this setup initially before getting a much higher quality radio. So it's okay to start with a cheaper variant, you're just not going to get as much for the money. Here I'm demonstrating the awesome scan function on the Motorola. It basically scans all the channels in the bank at the same time. And that's why it scans so fast versus like a Beofang rugged radio. It's going to scan one channel at a time in a loop. So that's one of the advantages of this radio is that its scan is just leaps and bounds better than the rest for a handheld. And now we're talking about the 8 inch steel tent stakes that I use to hold the guy lines up. These work wonderfully well. However, if you need a little more punching power, I do have a set of 12 inch nail stakes that work in higher wind applications. And I'm showing you an additional 30 foot section of RG 8X coax cable. The reason I keep this around is just in case I need to extend the length of where my radio is so that maybe I, I want the radio in my truck or I would like the radio in my base camp and not attached to the antenna. I would then connect some extra length of coax cable so that I can bring my radio anywhere around camp or any ar anywhere around the base setup. Keeping in mind the longer the coax cable, the more decibel gain loss we'll have. So theoretically we wouldn't be able to transmit as far with a longer run of the same coax cable. All right, you can see the antenna here, the VHF whip antenna made by Laird. It's a 55 inch, but you have to cut it to whatever frequency you're using. So I have it around 43 to 47, somewhere in between there. I've got 22 inch ground radials. This comes with the layered kit. And so that helps ground my antenna. And the NMO mount to the SO239 helps to connect my PL259 coax to it. So this whole setup is bolted to the painter's pole that I got from Lowe's. It's a 16 foot painter's pole that I'll link down below. And this helps to propagate my signal much further out because I get three decibels of gain here. And I receive from further away because my antenna is now 20 something feet in the air. Okay, here you can see the heart of the NMO mount to the SO239 to the PL259 layered VHF whip antenna and the four 22 inch radials. All right guys, if you wanna build this kit for yourself, all the products will be linked in the description below. This is Whiskey Romeo Juliet Kilo 783 slash Kilo Whiskey 6 Alpha Juliet Sierra and I'm clear and on the side monitor, Orange County, California. Copy, I'll let you know.